Okay, so what we have here is an improper integral, uh, the integral from negative infinity to zero of theta e to the theta d theta. Okay, we're going to integrate this by parts. Okay, so I'm going to choose my f to be theta. My f prime will be one. My g prime would be e to the theta, which would make my g be also e to the theta. I'm going to use the integration by parts formula here. So I'm going to change this into, I'm going to say that this is f g, so f g, so it's theta e to the theta, okay, technically I need to write the limit as b approaches uh, negative infinity uh, and evaluate this from b to zero, okay, minus the integral, we can go ahead and write b here as well, include this whole thing in that limit, um, b to zero of, what's this going to be, e to the theta d theta. Okay, so that becomes the limit as b approaches negative infinity of theta e to the theta minus e to the theta evaluated from b to zero. Okay, so I can I can do the top part pretty easy. The top part is just going to be zero times one minus one when you plug in your zero there. Your bottom part, uh, if we plug in that b, it's going to be minus the limit as b approaches negative infinity. Go ahead and plug in my b's here, so I get b e to the b minus e to the b. Okay, so if we look at this, we see that uh, it gets kind of kind of crazy here with the, the infinities. It's going to be negative infinity times um, e to the negative infinity minus e to the negative infinity. So it's it's kind of a little bit uh, messy to deal with there. So I'm going to rewrite this uh, minus the limit as b approaches negative infinity. First, I'm going to factor out an I'm going to factor out a negative e to the b. If I factor out a negative e to the b, that will give me 1 minus b. Okay, make sure you follow that. Factoring out this e to the b, if I just did it e to the b, it would be b minus 1. But I took a negative, so it switched it and made it 1 minus b. The reason I do that is because these negative signs here conveniently cancel out. So that would give me negative 1 plus the limit as b approaches negative infinity um, e to the b times 1 minus b. Again, we try to plug in the negative infinity, and it looks like we're going to get some sort of uh, infinity times another infinity. Um, actually, this one would be zero times uh, negative infinity, but we still we can't do it in this form. So we rewrite it again to try to put it in a form that L'Hopital can be used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that's one minus b over e to the negative b, which is the same thing here. Okay, now when I try to put in my negative infinities, um, I'm going to get infinity over infinity. Okay, it's infinity over infinity is good for L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so L'Hopital's rule says go ahead and take the derivative of the top through the bottom and reevaluate the limit. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've got the limit as b approaches negative infinity. The top becomes negative 1 and the bottom becomes, um, let's see, the bottom, we plug in a negative infinity there, and the bottom becomes, or, sorry, excuse me, we're taking the derivative, so we take the derivative, we get negative e to the negative b, getting ahead of myself there. Okay, now we reevaluate, we plug in the negative infinity into this, and the bottom is going to become infinite in the negative direction, but still infinite. Okay, so this whole thing, since the bottom is getting infinitely large and the top is a constant, this whole thing is going to go to zero. Okay, so this whole thing is negative one uh, plus zero or just negative one. And that's your answer.